Hello and welcome back to Monkey Night Fight. Folks, I'm Connor Rountree and we're joined now by AJ MMA. We're talking UFC. We got some fun bets, some prop bets on Monkey Night Fight, all the good stuff going through the card. It's the return of TJ, TJ Dillashaw. Can't even believe that it's happening. Two years. Guy's been suspended. And I really, one thing before we get into this, AJ, I just want to mention, I don't like the narrative that the UFC is presenting into this fight. The trailers, you don't hear anything. There's no mention of Corey Sandhagen, and that is a huge mistake. Um, I don't, like, ugh, I just, it bugs me so much. TJ Dillashaw not owning up to it. And I think Sandhagen's going to open, it's going to show him a very rude welcome back to the UFC. AJ, welcome to the show, by the way. There's my There's my rant for the day. It's all good, Connor. Glad to be here. Yeah, uh, TJ has quietly become a villain over the past few years with the alpha male beef and now the, uh, you know, suspension and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to the main event. And, and I do agree with you. You know, San Hagen has has been on a tremendous run here, uh, yet it ha he hasn't been as hyped as, as TJ in this promo. So, um, hope San Hagen can go out here, do, get, his, get his hand raised, and uh, one day see him contend for a title. I think he's got that in him. Yeah, he, he really does... Uh, he's an awesome striker. He has everything going for him, and he has the future. One fight that really stood out for me with him, it is an over-the-hill Frankie Edgar in a sense of his age and his abilities, but the way he was able to draw Frankie in with his hand and set up that knee so perfectly, like if you go back and watch that fight, AJ, I'm sure you've seen it a bunch of times, but holy moly, man, if you watch his, it, just the way he works, he's always thinking three steps ahead, and it's that right there. The way he walked him into that flying knee is just it's just it's it really is a master class and it's great to watch what other fights are you excited for on the card and let's get into the, some monkey knife fight picks aj what's uh what's uh, yeah what's what's your what are you most excited for dude this is the popular option but i i can't i can't not say it. you know yanez and costa that is basically guaranteed fireworks both of them guys come to fight they throw heavy hands uh there's been a little uh playful banter leading up to the fight with uh dr pepper versus uh reese's pieces debates <laughs> Uh, it's all fun in games though. They're going to go out there and throw a, a heavy bungalow. So that's going to be an awesome fight. Uh, even though we got the co-main event out of there, uh, we got an awesome main event. Uh, we got some fun fights earlier on the prelims, you know, P Puna Haley Soriano versus Brendan Allen, that should produce a finish. So man, this card's got a little bit of everything. Um, I'd even be willing to pay some money for this, for a card like this. I think it's quietly a really good fight night card. Well, I think TJ Dillashaw naturally, you mentioned that he's become a villain, but for better or for worse, he brings in an audience, right? And I'm going to be watching the fight. I'll be watching the entirety of the card. But TJ Dillashaw really is a massive selling point to really any UFC fan and anyone that has been around the sport for a better part of five years. And if you haven't seen TJ Dillashaw fight, folks, it's awesome. Um, go back and watch the Cody Garbrandt fights. He gets knocked down. He gets up and knocks him out. And let's talk about this fight, AJ. Let's just get right into the main event here. Corey Sandhagen, 78 and a half strikes on Monkey Night Fight. TJ Dillashaw, 57 and a half. Now, we were just, I was just mentioning those fights with, with Cody Garbrandt. He got rocked both times and survived. He ended up winning the fight, and but he also got rocked against Henry Cejudo. Now, TJ, for Cody Garbrandt's athletic ability, he does not have the fighter IQ, in my opinion, of that of Corey Sandhagen, where he can set something up down the line. I think it's more of just a strike first. Let's see what happens. And I think the what we saw there, I think that Sandhagen's going to set some traps and Dillashaw, he's going to be out of the cage for two years. He's going to be excited to be back in there. I think he's going to fall for the bait. And I don't see either of these guys getting to their strike lines because I think there's going to be a second round knockout because Dillashaw throws hard and Sandhagen's going to have to return the fire. So that's where I'm going. I'm going less and less on Monkey Night Fight. AJ, how do you feel about that one? Unlike the usual uh, rundown that we do, we're actually going to disagree with our first fight here. Um, I do here where you're coming from there is a chance that tj comes in here looks really rusty uh like you said sanhagen has looked so sharp the guy's so intelligent uh constantly improving fight to fight um and like you said D dillashaw does have some issues with durability um you know sanhagen or excuse me garbrandt both fights cejudo uh sanhagen not the biggest guy in terms of like a one punch knockout threat when he gets finishes with his hand it's more really like flurries, body shots, things like that. But as you mentioned, he does have really dangerous strikes with his legs, the flying knee, uh, the spinning attacks. 
Um, so I'm not ruling out a knockout for Sanhagen. He's the more durable fighter of the two. I think we could agree there. Um, mm-hmm. The thing with Dillashaw, though, is, I mean, he is a, ch- a championship level fighter. And I'm kind of going off of what tape suggests. Maybe he comes in here looking significantly off and regressed. But they both fight at extremely high paces. They're both great technical strikers. Um, they both, I think, excel the most at kicking range, both, but they're both good boxers as well. Um, I think we could see this fight go on a little bit here. I think that they're just going to have a lot of respect for each other's footwork. Their defense is very good. They're going to set each other traps. Um, And I just really liked Dillashaw's game plan against John Lineker, uh, just sticking on the outside, utilizing feints, throwing kicks, limiting pocket exchanges. Now, don't get me wrong. uh, That's going to be tougher to do against Sanhagen, who's going to be longer than him and also is great at kicking range. But um, I think we could see this fight play out. They both fight at high tempos. Dillashaw, I think, could mix in some takedowns to uh, limit the the knockout threat of Sanhagen. Sanhagen defends takedowns at a rate of 30%. Just looking back on tape, everybody who's pretty much wanted to take the guy down has gotten him get down. I, I love Sanhagen as a fighter, but if there's one knock on his game, it's that takedown defense, man. I mean, he's not a bad grappler on the ground. His jiu-jitsu slick. He could scramble well, but that takedown defense, man. And, and it's against guys that aren't even as good of wrestlers as Dillashaw. So uh, I do have my concerns about Sanhagen, but I understand people picking them. Uh, that said, I think this fight goes on for a little bit, and I think we see both overs hit. One, I think, uh, if you don't mind, guys, one just uh, note that I saw floating around the internet yesterday: uh, guys who've come back from specifically like EPO and blood doping, their records aren't necessarily favorable in their fights afterwards. The the goat Chael Sonnen five and six. I don't know if he's the best example to use. Uh, John Jones and the picograms thing. He was four and zero. He's the one outlier. But Anderson Silva like one and four. Um, when he got pinched for, for performance enhancing drugs. And I'm missing one other guy who was 0-5 after he came back from steroids. It's just not a favorable record for a lot of the guys coming back. And I think that's a super interesting narrative going into this. I'm not saying it, it could affect TJ either way. I, think, I just think it's interesting. Yeah, it it is. But back to that point, I think we don't know how clean TJ was. You know, the rumors around alpha male, obviously, you know, Cody Garbrandt was calling him a roid freak from the start of their beef, like way back in 2013, right? So there could be potential from guys in camp. Yeah, like, look, Jason and I were talking about that before. I know it's a weird point, but look at his nipples. Those things could cut through glass. Like, like that's so unnatural, man. And as you said, he's a high-quality fighter, and he went against Dominic Cruz, but what, what was he on? And we don't know that, but we do know one thing is that he's going to be clean – against Sandhagen. Sandhagen's never been knocked out. As you said, he's durable. And I think you're right. If TJ comes in with a great game plan and wants to wrestle, that was one thing that I want, wanted to talk about. And I'm glad you brought it up because TJ is by far, like TJ Dillashaw is a good wrestler. Like it, that's just the way it is. And he's going to be by far have the advantage on the ground. But again, I think there's going to be some excitement wanting to return. And he does like, you see him throwing hands. You see him yelling in Garbrandt's face after he knocks him out. Like the guys, he's, he's got some passion. He's got some flair. And to him, he is the villain and he's got a point to prove. And he, he said it in the, you see the trailers, the thing he wants to write his legacy and all that stuff. Yeah. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be heck. I think it's going to be one heck of a fight. I think it's going to be exciting, but yeah, I think we're going to disagree on that one. And I love that because it keeps, keeps me on my toes. Uh, just so but I yeah, right I think it's going to be a finish. Uh, more, so AJ, you got more and more on strike lines and Connor, you have less and less. That is correct? Okay. Correct. Yes, that is the way we're going with it, folks. Make your choice. Scroll down. All the buy-ins are right there. Go in, hit submit. It's going to be a fun fight, folks. And yeah, this actually relates to my knockout kings too because now we're just on this point because I have Sandhagen in my knockout kings um, because I really, like, I'm a pretty firm believer that he can do this because again, TJ Dillashaw EPO, like the way your blood moves when you're on that stuff, like your cardio is so good. And he was getting rocked, like absolutely rocked and dazed with that stuff in his system. So I like without that extra boost, I don't know if we've ever seen Dillashaw like that, but again, he is obviously the better wrestler. He And that's not to take – I don't want to take away anything of his skills, by the way, folks. Like, TJ Dillashaw is one of the best strikers I've ever seen, um, pound for pound. And obviously, dr- um, performance-enhancing drugs aside, his technical side of it, that, ha- that has nothing to do with it. But I will say that, obviously, you're going to be a very good Muay Thai fighter, and you can go a long time if you have the cardio of, I don't know, like 10,000 racehorses. 
Like it's it, it's just ridiculous, man. Anyway, AJ, we talked about it. Who are your knockout kings? I do like your pick on Sanhagen, even though I have my hesitancies to win. But something I like to do in this knockout king is I do like to do an if then statement. If Sanhagen wins this fight, I feel like there's a pretty good chance it's by knockout. We both agree that Dillashaw's got his durability issues. Um, again, and maybe Sanhagen just comes in here and just looks so much sharper than him. And he's just able to read him, just time a counter perfectly and knock him out. So I do like Sanhagen. I like your pick there. Another one, a little bit chalkier, more predictable is Adrian Yanez. He's facing a fighter, Randy Costa, who don't get me wrong. I think he, that's my <laughs> second pick. Nice. Awesome. We start with a disagree and then we're, we're continuing with the agree. I like the momentum. Um, so <laughs> My, I love Costa. I think he's extremely exciting. I love the move to Sanford MMA. That's a great camp. However, um, the one time we saw him extended, he did not look so good in that second round. Brandon Davis had his way with him on the ground. Um, Yanez more of a knockout threat than a submission threat. Um, I think that if Yanez gets him extended, or even if he just times a counter early, because Costa is just pretty reckless when closing distance, he's all power-based fighter. Uh, Yanez could go out here and get a quick knockout. The guy's so methodical and composed in there. Um, I my questions about his defense at times when he throws combinations, he tends to drop his hands, but who's the sharper striker. If you're asking me that I got to say, Adrian, you know, I love this kid, mm-hmm. I love both of them, but I think he knows is better last, but certainly not least. I got to go with Puna Haley Soriano. And even though I'm picking Allen to win this fight, another if then statement in my head, if Soriano gets this, gets the job done here, I feel like it's a, a good chance. It's by knockout. The guy throws heavy hands, uh, just throws them with all of his might. You could just tell he's really loading up in there. We know Allen is hittable, uh, very bad striking defense. Now, granted his striking, mm-hmm. his striking is improving overall, technically volume wise, a lot of good work with Henry hoof, but he still is very hittable. We saw two fights ago, Sean Strickland landed 90 head strikes in about six and a half minutes of time and, and got a knockout there. So um, certainly Soriano will have opportunities to land and he has opportunities to land hard. So I like Soriano's chances of getting a knockout. Should he win this fight? One, uh, one other knockout that I wanted to uh, mention for my knockout Kings was Kyler Phillips. So I'm, I'm high on this guy, man. I think he's so exciting. I think he's fun to watch the way he jumps in and out of his stances, the way he just hops around the octagon, landing over five significant strikes per minute, uh, beating Song Yadong in that last fight. And I actually going into that fight, I thought Song was going to have his number and he impressed the heck out of me in that fight. And I mean, Pavia, he looks good. I think this is going to be a great fight. I think these guys are both going to land, but moving up that weight class into Kyler Phillips weight class, I think that's going to be big. Like 125 up to 135 against a guy with the power of Phillips is going to make a significant difference. And I think Phillips is going to get the finish late second, third round. I'm not taking away anything from Pavia. Like he's durable. He's strong. He's got great boxing, but it's a bigger, stronger man. Science says Kyler Phillips knockout. Boom. I like it, man. Mic drop. Um, another contest I want to take a look at on Monkey Knife Fight, if you don't mind, Jason. Can we pull up the ladies? Obviously, we lost Aspen Lad. That was very sad. We were all talking about that. We thought Aspen Lad was going to go on and put on a show. Well, uh, Miranda Maverick and Macy Barber, please. So I have more and more on this. I understand that Mar- Miranda Maverick's line is 94 and a half strikes. Uh, one thing that Macy Barber does is she loves to strike and she does not move her head. Her head is on the center line the entire time. And Miranda Maverick is too good and too skilled. And she is going to touch her up with a hundred jabs. And I like Macy Barber. She's tough. She's going to respond. This is going to go long. I think Miranda Maverick wins it by decision. AJ, how do you have this one going down? Are we going to disagree again? Okay. Thank goodness. Man, we're going to grant not just on that, but we're going to agree on all fronts of this fight. I think that Miranda Maverick, excuse me, wins the decision here. I think she's a better striker, and I have to think that if there are takedowns to be landed here, they more than likely come from Maverick. I do like your point about they're both really tough. That probably goes the distance. Um, Barbara does not move her head. That is a great read that you have on tape. Um, and Maverick, we know, could throw heavy volume. I mean, she loves to strike. And Maverick, to me, kind of reminds me a bit of Dustin Poirier. When she is in that rhythm, like, she is a woman that cannot be stopped. Like, she cannot yeah. be stopped in there. She will just time you. Her variety is excellent. Her her counters, her, her just overall output. So, um, once she gets into that groove, that rhythm, I think she could land on Barbara at will. And on the flip side, uh, Barbara is, is aggressive, comes forward, throws heavy volume herself. Um, Maverick can be touched up a bit herself. So I do like over uh, for both ladies here. And not only that, to, 
just to AJ's point here, I think just there's more what we were talking about with the Poirier Connor fight. There's just more paths to victory here for Miranda Maverick because I mean, just taught you were mentioning it, her ability to mix it up and change the pace. I mean, against Jillian Robertson, she took her down three times and still landed like 77 significant strikes, I believe, just on the feet. So it's just it's incredible to see her be that efficient on the feet in the striking, landing 76, 77 significant strikes, and then still being able to out grapple Jillian Robertson, who has a wrestling background. So I'm very impressed by Miranda Maverick. And I think this is going to be an awesome fight folks and it's going to go long and yeah, there's going to be a lot of strikes landed. So make sure AJ and I are agreeing on that one. So make sure. Um, yeah, that's, that's probably a good one to look at if you're sitting at home, AJ, any other picks that you just want to take a look at? Uh, yeah, I would like to shift our attention over to the uh, Jordan Williams and Mickey golf fight. Oh, don't mind. Oh, man. <laughs> I had to throw it in there. Could, could... New Jersey um, zone. Why Mickey not? Mickey goal. Could I, could I just say this is quietly and nobody, nobody will really admit this, but this is one of the most highly anticipated fights on the card, just because both of their last appearances, I guess, you know, Jordan Williams is a guy that, you know, came into the UFC with a lot of hype and the guy has got an incredible chin. This guy will take damage and will come forward and just not stop. Um, you know, even though he lost against Imabov, I think Imabov is a talented guy. Uh, Mickey Gall did not have a good, as good of a showing against Mike Perry last time out, just got outstruck, got out muscled on the ground. I quietly think he got beat up to say the least. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just I think this fight blank. quietly goes the distance. And then in that scenario, I think we see these guys just come forward, throw a lot of labored strikes in rounds two and three, because they both have showed issues with cardio in the past, but I trust both of their toughness as the fight goes on. Um, unless if Jordan Williams is on top of Mickey Gall, Diego Sanchez style, just nonstop with the ground and pound. Aspen Ladd, As- <laughs> I think we see a sneaky over here, man. So I like b- both overs on, on this fight. I think, yeah, I think one point that you did allude to is that both these guys are probably fighting. I'm not sure what their contracts and situations are, but they're not in uh, Uncle Dana's good books by any means. Obviously, Mickey Gall, when he came in, he he stopped Super Sage and Dana White's next best thing. And then the CM Punk performance was just so awful. Just let CM Punk box. He went in and just shot. It was so awful. Mickey Gall, only six and three. I just, I'm not a Mickey Gall guy. I just, I can't say that I am. Um, but I will say him walking into, hey, Mickey, he's so fun. He's, it's entertaining, entertaining stuff. Yeah, I like that pick, though. I think they're going to walk forward. I think they both need to, they both need a win, as you alluded to. And uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot of a lot of strikes thrown in that one. And then the um, Yanis fight again versus Randy Costa. Jason, if you can take us to that. Uh, I think that does end by knockout, as we said. But I think Costa is going to stand in there long enough to get to four, like if it was 50 strikes, I'd be hesitant. I still, but I think they can get to 45 strikes a piece easy. And I think Yanez will get over his line. Uh, But that cost, I think Costa will hang in there long enough to get the 44 strikes because they're going to trade. Yanez is hittable, but I don't know. Where do you see this one going in AJ? I have more and more just because it's so low. I guess they are anticipating the knockout on monkey knife. It's just a great line. How do you see it? It reminds me of when we were talking on this very show about Greg Hardy versus Ty Tuivasa. Like, yeah, if this fight gets extended, I could see it going over easily. But I just don't know if it's going to get extended because, like you said, they're both hittable. They both have a lot of power. If you're asking me to pick one side or the other, I would actually lean less because Mm -hmm. I just think that somebody's going to get slept here early. Um, I understand your logic. I respect it. But I'm going to go on the other side of this one as well. Nice. Well, we're going back and forth. I got the knockout in the main event. You're taking the knockout here. And we have them both in our knockout kings. So that's probably lines up nice. But back to that, just just uh, because we did talk about Ty Tua Vesa a little bit in that show and Greg Hardy. I did do a shoey, just so you know, after that knockout. Really? Yeah. Um, Impressive. It, it, uh, yeah, that happened. Uh, I, yeah, just straight off. It, it didn't work as well as I planned, though, because it was a flip-flop. Um, so, yeah. How's that even, how did that so, even work? I mean, it's yeah, just going like, to out. Yeah, exactly. So I kind of just like put my flip flop in my mouth and like poured a beer like down it and like all my daily like sweat and like foot grossness. Anyway, it was an awesome knockout, though. I took him in my knockout king. So, hey, boom, tied to Evesa. And the fact that Greg Hardy gets up and says he had him doing the chicken dance after and tied to Evesa, like, come on, man, you got knocked out. Relax. Any other contests that you want to take a look at here, AJ? 
I think we nailed it, man. I just, I, I really do like uh, the dynamic of the slates. Uh, yeah, I think we made some really good picks. I think we have some good analysis. And yeah, Jason, fun, fun can card. we just go take a look at the uh, Ciara Eubanks fight, please? So I think this is another fight uh, where I'm not sold on Ciara Eubanks' technical striking side, but she is so tough. So I think, and Alyssa Reed, she's a, not UFC. She hasn't really fought that caliber yet, obviously. I know that you're not a big fan of, of compared to the caliber, as we, t- we talked about that before. But I think this could be a little over her head. But I think there's going to be a lot of strikes thrown because I don't see Ciara Eubanks being able to finish this fight. What do you Where do you see this fight going, AJ? Man, I think this sets up really nicely for Ciara Eubanks, to be honest with you. I know that she's had... Mm. Uh, you know, been a little bit inconsistent. She's got her issues with cardio, but man, when I see Reed on tape, I'm seeing her mounted multiple times. I'm seeing her mm-hmm. taken down easily. I'm seeing her put in deep submission attempts. This is Sajara Eubanks' easiest fight, I think, in the UFC to date. And I actually am going to boldly predict her to go out here and get a finish. I know that her resume uh, says she's more of a decision fighter, but when you have such a wide gap on the ground uh, in submission grappling, Sajara is a BJJ world champion, BJJ black belt. Um, and she almost submitted Julia Avila. I got a 10 8 round in there. And I just think that if she did that to Avelia, who's a very strong woman, a BJJ brown belt, she's going to have an easier time doing it to a smaller opponent who's not doesn't come from nearly the pedigree. So um, I actually think that if you're asking me to pick over or under for this fight, I'm actually going to say under because I think Sajar is going to go out here, get a quick takedown, pass guard and amount, and then get an arm triangle choke because there's just such a massive skill gap on the ground, man. Well, there's also a massive size gap that you you did allude to it. I mean. Reed's going up a weight class here. She's usually fights at 125. She's only five foot three. She's given up four inches of reach. So Eubanks is going to be able to get her hands on her. I have Eubanks as I have Eubanks uh, finishing this fight as well. Um, but I just, I, I thought it was going to go a little longer just because uh, fun fact, all of her fights in the UFC have gone to decision every single one. Um, and I just, I guess I, that was more my thought is I just, I haven't seen her ever get that finish on in the UFC, but as you alluded to Reed coming into the UFC now, probably the easiest opponent that she's going to face. No disrespect to Reed. Uh, She's great on the feet, but if Eubanks goes for a takedown, I could see your logic, but at the same time, I kind of think Reed was going to stand in there a little longer, but I do think Eubanks will obviously get the, get an easy, uh, easy victory, whether it's a decision or finish. I think it will, like, as I said, I think it is a decision, but I think it happens a little later. Fair enough. And anything else that you wanted to touch on from this? Card? Wow, this is such an awesome card, man. Julio Arce. Oh, my goodness. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining in on Monkey Knife Fight. Make sure you tune into that Julio Arce and Andre uh, Andre Ewell fight, too, folks. I know we can't talk about that one now. But holy moly, folks, this is a great card. AJ said he'd pay for it. I'd pay for it. Make sure you guys go on the Monkey Knife Fight. Select your favorite contest. Take a look. Circle back to this show. It'll be on YouTube later. And you can always hit up AJ on Twitter at AJ MMA betting and myself at sports with tree. Thank you so much for tuning in today's monkey knife fight. I'm Connor. That's AJ. Remember to hit it hard.